from my Freeform Renegades. You are tuned into the Freeform Network. Thanks for joining us for another fun episode of Freeform Radio. I am your host, Noel, with my co-host, Daniel. What's poppin'? And Andy. The superstar athlete is back. <laughs> it's another beautiful day here in Chicago. It's a little bit muggy for my taste, but wherever you listeners are, we hope you're sitting cool, feeling right, and ready for tonight. So, uh, Andy, let's get it going, man. We're trying to catch up and make sure our listeners are aware of what's going on in our lives. So let's start it off with you, man. How's everything been? Well, it's a, a, another eventful week here at the Aguirre household. I have uh, been extremely busy watching a lot of TV and binging shows, as always, because I'm the Freeform uh, Network's resident binge-watching expert. And the one that me and, and, and the missus watched was um, the new Jack Ryan show on Amazon for all you Prime members. Um, I started watching that. I don't know if you guys heard of it or watched it at all. Oh, yeah, man. Awesome fucking show. Yeah, I watched it, too. Uh, me and Alana really dug it. Damn, I guess uh, uh, I'm the contrarian here. I have uh, mixed feelings about it. My wife, like, loved it. And I'm just like, I know the, the Jack Ryan character from, uh, you know, Hunt for Red October up to, you know, Han Solo doing his thing for a while. And then Batman and for Han Solo, I mean, Harrison Ford. And then uh, Batman, Ben Affleck had a movie. And, it, and then even Captain Kirk played one for a while with uh, with Superman's dad, Kevin Costner. I don't know if you guys ever seen those. Uh, yeah, I've seen the, the original ones. Uh I never saw the Ben Affleck one, but I did see the uh, the other version the, with uh, Harrison Kurt. Ford. And then I did watch the Kurt one and then the other one, too. Who was it? Uh, Bal- uh, Alex. Who, who's uh, the other? Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin. Yeah, for yeah. the first one. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, The Shadow for all you uh, comic book people out there. But uh, going back to, you know, Jim from The Office playing Jack Ryan, this iconic character that I watched a lot and it started off good but I I feel like they were trying too much to appease everyone like down to uh, the terrorist down to uh, Jack Ryan like another flawed uh, hero with his struggles from coming back to the war down to the mean boss you know and his woman I, I, I guess they, the, the, with his, uh, not his woman, but, you know, his, I don't know what she was. She wasn't really his girlfriend, right? Uh, love interest. She was like, love interest. She's just like, yo, I just want to hook up, you know. I got to get, I, I got to get my freak on, but I still, my work's my number one priority. <clears throat> and, and Jack Ryan in, in the movies, in, uh, I never read the books. He's not really like, he's more like a. Uh, like, I'm, I'm the marriage type of guy, you know, super conservative. So they, they tweaked it a little. And then down to the terrorist, you kind of see they got, he got the terrorist, got, uh, got some backstory. <coughs> and, you know, they're, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Do the terrorist got you, Andy? <laughs> Apparently they're fucking through some gas up in here, man. They're trying to kill me. Jesus. Another quality show here at Freeform Radio, guys. Stay tuned here. Um, so, yeah, you know, the, the, the terrorists, I feel like they try to humanize them too much. And I'm like my 80s. Uh, gr- I grew up watching 80s movies. I'm like, man, fuck them guys. I don't want to know what their story is. I just know they hate America. Let's go fuck them up and bomb the shit out of them. <laughs> and, you know, and I guess uh, today's audience is like, we don't want that. We want to know more. And then, you know, the story dwells from there with the, 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 I don't want to give too much spoilers, but there's a couple of threats. And then obviously it all ends up back in America. Yeah. I think, uh, when you start comparing it to the older stuff, man, that's, you're going to find a lot of things to complain about, man. It's usually the way it goes. You're already just a uh, certain way. And then it's like, they change it up on you. I get it for other shows. Like, they've done that to me for other shows. But for this one, man, I was I didn't have the same backstory or the same background of uh, having this character in my life. So it was like watching it for the first time. And it was, to me, it was pretty interesting, man. It was uh, action-packed and had some drama in there. 
Yeah, for real quick on a technical note here for all you listeners out there, we just lost Danny. Uh, his Skype just dropped. We're hoping to get him back on soon. So right now it's uh, we dropped Danny and it's the Andy and Noel show on Freeform Radio. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so we're gonna carry this show like we always do, Noel, until Danny comes back. And uh, again, going back to the show, you know, the guy when I instantly saw the show, I'm like, what is Jim doing? Fighting terrorists from the office, you know? Yeah, no, it's... right. You can't, you can't help but just that's fucking Jim. Where's Pam? <laughs> And where's Dwight? <laughs> as I much as that guy has evolved so much since the days from the office, it's kind of hard to not think of him, think of him as Jim Halpert. So, well, he's, but he's uh, definitely trying to like branch out, man. I've been seeing a lot of rumors of how he's been like bugging uh, executives to try to be in like a superhero movie, like the DC universe or Marvel universe. Yeah. Well, absolutely, you know, and, and he has grown a lot since uh, the Halpert days, and I have not seen his movie, I guess it's a horror movie, a quiet movie. I don't know if you've seen that, Noel, that Quiet or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, Did you see that? Oh, yeah, it was, it was interesting, man, because it's like, uh, almost like paying homage to like the old movies that were silent and still kind of captivating, right. Nosferatu, for example. This is obviously a little bit more modern than that, but uh, it, it's it's got some good selling points. Uh, definitely for his, I think it's his first directorial debut, and uh, yes. for for being the first time you ever directed a movie, I thought it was pretty good. Like I'd give it like at least a seven minimum. Yeah, I, I haven't had time to to check it out. So for all you people out there, you might have heard a, a weird noise. Uh, modern technology has brought Danny back. We couldn't continue the show without him <laughs> and i'm hoping he responds and he's there oh oh man there he goes guys he yeah we don't need you Danny. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> so this is gonna be one stellar show so make that call to uh, comcast i know man it's um our, our, our mc is uh, out right now he's having issues but go going back to what i was talking about with the jack ryan show um, overall, I, I, I do feel, you know, uh, looking at it, 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 stepping back, it looked kind of cheap to me. I don't know if you felt like that, Noel. And I felt like they were just cursing for the sake of cursing. And I, I don't think that character can work as a TV show. You know, I... I think I know where you're coming from on that. Um, the thing is, there's like, have you ever seen MacGyver? Yes. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Damn, the gas is coming to me over here too. Fucking terrorist. <laughs> Fucking terrorist. <laughs> um, so, all right, MacGyver had an old show, I think, back in the 80s, 90s, right? They made a new one with uh, the guy that played Havoc in the Marvel Universe. Uh, right. I think it was something Lucas... Anyway, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. So he's the new MacGyver, pretty much. That show has been going on for I think three, four seasons now, and it has gotten horrible reviews and received pretty badly. But I still kind of tune in to see because I'm like curious to see how it progresses. And surprisingly, the show is still keep, is still going. Like they renewed it for another season despite all these bad reviews. So to me, it's like a lot of people. It's like a niche type thing. Like some people are gonna love it, some people are gonna hate it, but ultimately that doesn't mean it's a bad show. It's just it not every show can cater to every single person. Exactly. It, it, it I, like I said, it is a niche show. Um, real quick, are you are you here with us back, Danny? Oh. No. Well, there you go. Uh, <laughs> going back, we need MacGyver to help out Danny's uh, technical issues that he's having at home right now. So, um, going back to MacGyver, when I watched <laughs> MacGyver, he was uh, it, it was a TV show, you know. And we continue. Uh, MacGyver to me, it was always be a TV show. Now they made TV movies. Uh, when I was growing up with uh, Richard Dean Anderson, and 
when they brought back the show uh, MacGyver, I think it was on CBS. I don't know if he's like his son or what's the deal or if it's just a complete reboot. Do you know what it is? It seems like a complete reboot and with the younger version, like not fresh out of like whatever organization he was in, but like kind of uh, the start of that organization that he's part of now. And the thing is, I don't know the old one. I don't know if it's I can't compare it because I never really saw a lot of the old one. But for right now in this new one, he's got a team um, that called the Phoenix, I believe. And uh-huh. the Phoenix is an organization kind of like uh, like 007's organization. You know, like, uh, what, what do they call that? I... Well, MI6. MI6, yeah. Is that MI6? Yeah, they're, they're intelligence agencies. Right, yeah. I, I don't know the British stuff. I'm sorry. You tell me the CIA, I know right away what you're talking about. But uh, anyway, MI6, my bad. Um, they're, they're kind of like that, but it's more covert. Like it's uh, under the under the the table kind of thing. So when they when they go and do stuff, they uh, it's usually like high level terrorists and stuff like that. Kind of like Jack Ryan, where it was kind of like hush hush. Like it's not like everybody knows what he's doing. He's kind of playing this uh, this like undercover analyst. Analyst, yeah. <laughs> well, he's an analyst, right? Which the, every movie they always go to him. Um, like oh what do you, what's your assessment on this guy and the assessment is wrong but he's right blah 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 and then they did the same thing for the show uh, you know let's bring it back to the show and he is just you know oh, I'm an analyst blah 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 and like no you're Jim Halbert from the office uh, but and then next you know he's his boss hates his guts but let's go uh, um, what did he call him uh, uh, brainy boy or some goofy thing. I don't remember. Like I said, I watched it. My wife loved it. Um, you know, it, 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 and I feel like if you had to tell me a recommend or not, I'm kind of leaning not to recommend it, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it makes sense. I, I don't expect you to like that kind of show. Uh, it's, it is a little bit more for, like, I guess, the... The modern day viewer, it's or not modern day, more political. You old fuck. No, 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 like more political. You know what I mean? Like. Well, yeah, it's kind of what what we're what we're uh, going through now in modern society. You know, we just don't want. I'm a monster. I'm a bad guy. Let's find out why he's a monster, right? Which they do with the terrorist and its family. You know, family is important, and you know, and to me, I didn't like that aspect. I just want to know, you know. We gotta get this motherfucker. He's gassing people, uh, and he's a terrorist. Like I don't need to know why he became a terrorist or how he became a terrorist or how he was persecuted in a certain country and all that other crap. To me, none of that matters. I just know he's a bad guy, and that's good enough for me. Yeah, I guess uh, it's the first season, so they're trying to like build depth, you know. And in order to do that, like they have to get him in situations where he's trying to like discover more. Otherwise. He's an analyst. He's like, yeah, that guy's bad. Oh, okay, well, your job's done, dude. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> it's the end of the show, guys. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going to promote you next season. You know, dun, dun, dun. I'm just like, oh, man. Oh, he's going like to I Russian. said, yeah. <laughs> man, like, it was just, to me, that was like, like I said, I, I think I prefer the movie more. Like, uh, beating a dead horse here, but it just did not. Knowing the character as I know and how I watched his movies, and like they with Harrison Ford and the Batman one was pretty, pretty good. Uh, you know Brian, uh, Ben Affleck and uh, the Chris Pine one. You know the Kirk, those were not bad movies. Uh, especially the Harrison Ford ones. They that that was made into, I believe it's a trilogy or is it two? It's two of them. He fights uh, the drug cartels and he fights the Irish mafia. And then with the Ben Affleck one, he fights the, the Russians. And I think on the Kirk one uh, with Pine, he fights Russians too. Um, but to me, I, I like the, the two-hour block movie instead of getting ten one-hour episodes. Uh, I, I, like I said, I wasn't feeling it. And um, I, I, to me, I'm going to have to not recommend it. Uh, you guys want to bash me, hit me up. I, I, I just cannot recommend it at this time. No, fair enough, man. They might need another season to kind of win you over. 
I don't know if I want to watch the the next season. I know my wife's kind of pumped for it. I'm I'm like, eh, if it comes on, cool. If not, uh, it's cool. I'd rather watch reruns of MacGyver or watch something else, you know? <laughs> I hear you, man. <laughs> you got to stick to so, what you like. Exactly. Uh, and sticking, you know, good uh, comment there, Noah. I got to st- stick into what I like. Hold on, let me let me confirm if he's back, people. Danny, can you hear us? I believe I'm back. I'm not sure. Oh shit, man! The show was just going, and you interrupted. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. That's that's this government cheese internet that I be getting, man. That uh, be interrupting here, but hopefully everything is back up and running. So we'll see if oh, I. You came. Did your neighbor change the password to the Wi-Fi, man? You, you can't steal it no more? What? I, I think so, man. I don't know what the hell's going on. But, uh, man, it might be time to upgrade some internet around here, man. Can't get away with that dial-up anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just talking. We just finished uh, reviewing. Uh, real re- recap for you. I cannot recommend the Jack Ryan show. Ugh. You're just going to have to listen to the episode to see or hear me and Noel's comments. All right. Sounds sounds good, man. I, myself, I liked it, like I mentioned at the start. Uh, I thought it was a good take, even though I do hold that Jack Ryan old school version dear in my heart as well. So uh, yeah, uh, that, yeah, that's, that. that's still got to spot, but this is definitely a, a good new take for the new generation. Yes, it, they really modernized it very much, and... Um, so the the other thing when I'm not watching shows real quick I, I I'm into uh, with the previous podcast uh, uh, episode two episodes of I talked about how I joined the softball team and I've been getting blown up on the streets when I'm walking by man what's going on uh, I get texts constantly about it how many home runs you hit this week Damn. and uh, I'm here to tell everybody I had to quit the softball team man. oh what oh um, man. Yeah, I know, man. You know, I had to take my talents were needed somewhere else. Um, believe me, man, the team was heartbroken about it. They were talking about retiring my jersey. Oh, but before, you know, before I even played one game, I told them, no, it's OK. Go ahead and give it to the next guy, the next batter. He he deserves an opportunity, though he'll never fill my shoes. <laughs> so. That's where I'm at with my softball career, guys. I had commitments, you know, me being a, an awesome uh, podcaster here. Um, well, how, how's the team doing? I, oh, man, I'm glad uh, I resigned, you know, because I had prior commitments to FFR Radio. Um, there was a scheduling conflict. Uh, originally, the games were going to be on Thursday. They switched them to Wednesday. And I'm like, no, can't do, man, unless I get a bigger signing bonus. And they couldn't commit to that. So I decided to stay here with F, uh, Freeform Radio. Did you start kneeling down or, or you just stopped? Nah, man, I support America. And f- uh, like you heard uh, with the Kaepernick talk, uh, unless Nike pays me a shitload of money, like $20 million, I'll maybe I will think about kneeling. All right. But right now, fuck that shit. And... Uh, but ultimately, Noel, I'm going to tell you this. The league has a slaughter rule, and I've heard that they've been using it <laughs> on our team. So uh, as much as I hate to say it, uh, the ga- games have been ending early. Oh. Well, Andy, I, I, I have heard a little bit of what's going on with the games. Um, and I think it's kind of like I mentioned to you when you were first starting up. These are middle-aged men because they, they all work at our job, so most of them are middle-aged <laughs> people, you included, Andy, and me too. And it's people who think they have what they used to have in high school, in grade school. And when they put it out on the field, it's that's the realization that it's just like, Jesus, I, I can't do this anymore like I used to. My back, my knees, my legs, my arms. And it's just a realization, man. It's, people get old, and they, they can't do it like they used to. Well, yeah, that, that's why I said, like, uh, I still got it. I don't know about you, Danny, but I still fucking got it. But uh, unfortunately, the team couldn't come up with it. And it, speaking of someone who, who still has it in uh, the big sport of, of, of frothling, I'm, I'm hoping I'm saying that, Noel. 
Now you mentioned something. You had some new tools to enhance your game. Uh, what do you, what can you tell us about that? Is it the same stuff uh, John Jones is using, or? Uh, I'm not quite <laughs> on that level, man. Not yet, at least. We'll see how it develops. <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, I got some uh, discs. It's called uh, Froth, actually. It's just com- combining like frisbee. Froth. Yeah, frisbee and golf. Froth. Ah, okay. Yeah, but uh, so yeah, they're called discs because they're not exactly like frisbees. And so uh, Robert, which is the guy that works out with me, we figured out, we're like, all right, you know, we're going to need our own discs if we're actually going to get good at this sport. We were borrowing it from my other cousin, Ismael, who kind of got us, like, into the sport, uh, I want to say about a year ago. Uh, we'd play every now and again. But now we're playing with more frequency. Me and Robert, goal, we went this uh, past weekend uh, before the Bellator event started, and uh, we used our new discs. We each got three of them. Uh, we got a driver, we got a mid-range, and we got a putter. So it's almost like if you're uh, if you're golfing, you have the same setup. You know, you have a you have a driver, mid-range, and a putter. And so these discs, uh, um, depending on the velocity, depending on the uh, like the actual assembly of the of the disc, it'll curve in a certain way, and it'll either go farther or stop short, depending on you know how it's made and assembled. There's a lot of tricks to it. I'm not an expert or nothing. I just started. But uh, is is the material different, or is it like sturdier? Or, uh, yeah. Does or it is a different material, and that gives it. It's definitely better, sturdier. Like control. De- definitely more durability. Uh, better control. Uh, it is a little bit more weighty, like uh, heavier. But it all depends on which one you're using. There's some that are putters, which are actually a lot lighter. And they're they're meant to be light because you're supposed to throw it like in a relatively like close range. I would say maybe from like ten yards or less. You know what I mean? The nice thing is when you throw these these drivers or you throw the discs in general, uh, you have a, a basket you're trying to get it to, right? And no matter where it lands, you have like a circular radius around that basket. So it's it's a lot easier to hit it. It's not like a basketball hoop, right? Let's say you're throwing it from one side and you're trying to hit it on one side. If you throw it past it, well, you're fucked. Now you got to get, you know, on the other side of it and to try to make it in. This one, wherever side you are on the basket, you can still make it in. So what you're really trying to do is go for distance in the first one. And then in the second one, if you don't make it that far, you use like a mid-range to try to just get it close yet. Mm -hmm. You know, line it up as good as you can so you don't have fucking trees in your way. That's another thing. It, it really depends on the park you go to because there's some really difficult parks that'll have you fucking in the woods, like dodging like uh, fucking worshippers and cults and shit like Schiller Woods and Man Cow. <laughs> shit. And the two red eyes seen you. <laughs> He's like, let me throw that disc. Not to mention all the raccoons and deers. Yeah. No, <laughs> I haven't seen any deer yet, but you, you'd be surprised, man. There's a lot of stuff out there, so you got to be careful depending on where what park you go to. There's actually uh, a park we're going to go to uh, this upcoming Saturday. Uh, I think it's called Sunrise Park. It's supposedly one of the most haunted places in Illinois, or in, in the United Jesus. States. Literally, Damn. Illinois was rated number one in, in the United States. For haunted parks? Yeah. On this list. I was like, wow. In Cook County? Uh, it's uh, Bartlett, Illinois. Oh, okay. yeah, it sounds like Cook County. No, it came, probably. No, Bartlett's, well, I don't Bartlett know. Bartlett by, like, it's, uh, it's south of St. Charles and Geneva, I think. So, yeah, that is King County, then, by Aurora. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yes, that's King County. So, yes. Noel, is this is this a uh, new sport? Can you play it during the winter, or is it only seasonal, like, uh, during the warm temperatures? Uh, generally, man, the warm temperatures. If it's if it's snowing or anything like that. It gets difficult. I mean, yeah, you could you could try to you know beast it out, of course, if you if you're that kind of person, because if you can play football, you can play froth. You know, it's just weather affects it greatly. If it's a windy day, you're gonna have a pretty bad day in terms of frothing, because um, you're throwing these discs in the air, and it's gonna be flying, going against the the current pretty much, and it's not it's, it's not gonna go as far. So if you need to throw 300 feet. And the wind's going in against you, then psh, good luck. You know you're gonna you're not gonna get the the three par or whatever or less. 
Uh, wow. So, so I would imagine that the snow and, and the winds from these uh, blizzard type conditions we, we're used to here in Chicago, it make it a little bit difficult then to play it during the winter. Oh, for sure, man. They There are some dedicated people out there, but that's not going to be me, I'll tell you that. I'm trying to get all my frothing in before the winter hits because, uh, yeah, that's not going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, with the disc, the, so does the disc, uh, I want to know, does it improve accuracy or it helps with the distance? Uh, the, the variances, there's some that help with the distance and there's some that help with the accuracy. Uh, for example, the mid-range one is it just throws straight. Like, if you throw it as hard as you can, it's just going to go straight. There might be a slight, very slight curvature to it, but a lot of that depends on how you release it, if you release it at an angle or if you release it straight off. And the drivers are the ones that have greater distance, but the accuracy is going to be a little bit trickier because they angle. So when you throw it up, it's going to fly up real high, and it might cut really hard. So you want to throw it a little bit to the right, depending on if it's cutting to the left or left if it's cutting to the right. Damn. The putter, obviously, those you actually have a grip difference on every everything. So, like, the putters, the, the close distance ones, you grab it like you're grabbing a fan. Like, let's say you're grabbing a, a pillow, right, to try to, like, mm -hmm. fan your face. It's really hot or something. That's how you're going to grab it. You're going to grab it with your fingers like spread apart and your thumb on top and your four fingers underneath. And and you're going to kind of like uh, you're going to do like a like a fake throw and you're going to keep like setting it up. And then the last one, you finally release it. And uh, yeah, usually I'm actually pretty good at putting. That's where I, my skill is at. A lot of people have commented well, when we play with them, they've said that I'm, I'm getting like natural the hang of it pretty much. I'm getting it naturally. Oh shit! You might have found your your niche, man. You've never really been a big sports guy, football, baseball, and that stuff. Maybe this is your your little niche. Yeah, it's fun, man. Like, I mean, I've played baseball and like catch and stuff, and basketball. Basketball is probably the the best thing I'm at. But like, I've always just kind of been like, uh, just do it for fun and and froth, man. You'd be surprised if you give it a chance and you just want something to chill. Maybe you have a few beers and you're just walking along in nature. This is a good thing for that. Cool, man. So so what kind of groupies are there, there man? If I join these teams, are, are there groupie women there cheering me on for, you know, me hitting that, that basket? Well, I just started getting into it, but you'd be surprised, man. There are, are very uh, competitive people out there. Uh, there are pros for this, and they can do some ridiculous shit with it. Uh, a, a lot of the, the pros, they throw it in a different way. So normally when you throw a Frisbee, you throw it from your chest out, right? Right. So like you're going to throw it away from your body. These guys, they start with it on the outside and throw it like with their forehand, like forearm, almost like you're throwing a pitch, like you're pitching the ball. Right. And it's so weird when they do it, man. Like it. It's, it's crazy how skilled some of these guys are. Um, if, if you if you were ever impressed with those YouTube videos of guys flipping bottles and having it land in a certain way, and everybody starts fucking cheering because they just flipped a bottle, dude, these guys are gonna fucking make all these people like orgasm in their pants because they're fucking ridiculous in the way they throw these discs. Yeah, I, usually when I throw a frisbee, I put it up against my chest and I just fling it and then i'm hoping it doesn't kill nobody <laughs> that's and another thing man. like usually all the way down to like the left that's another thing when you're playing with a lot of people man you got to be careful and you got to be careful of not hitting somebody as well as not getting hit right. as, there, there's a every park is public you know so you're you're playing with whoever's there at the time and sometimes it's it gets busy so you got to be either be rushing or you got to be mindful and be like, hey, you guys can go ahead of us because we're going to just take our time, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, that's uh, that's what I did over the weekend before we watched the fights. Uh, Bellator had an event. I don't know if you guys got a chance to see it or, or the results of it. Was it a pay-per-view or was it on the Paramount Network? It's weird, man. The Paramount Network, uh, 
I think they started up a new network or something like a website where you can watch like certain events for Bellator. Because there's this thing they call the uh, well the the acronym is uh, it's spelled D A Z N, but it, it so it is true. I thought it was these nuts. <laughs> yeah, it was weird, man. I was like, what is this Dazen? Like I don't I didn't know what yeah. to yeah. pronounce it. It's supposedly called the Zone. Oh. It's so fucking stupid, man. In my mind, it's so, so it's a stream. Is it an app or is it like uh, you can do the app? Obviously, it has to be an app. Right? Well, you can do the app or the website. So the website streams it the same way the app would. Uh, you can do a free trial. I think it'll last a week or a month or something like that. But after that, you have to pay for it. And we're like, you know what? Uh, we have our methods of watching these things, yes. and so we found the method and. And yeah, we, we streamed it, and uh, the fights were actually exciting. They're the the main card, at least. Let me uh, just give you a little recap of that. Uh, the last three fights, uh, Douglas Lima fought and defeated Andre uh, Koroshkov through submission in the fifth round. And Douglas Lima, previous to this fight, lost against Rory McDonald, and he lost his championship to Rory McDonald, who is currently the welterweight champion so the next fight was rampage i don't know if you remember rampage jackson he yes. was in the a team the, the new movie mm -hmm. he fought uh vanderlei silva and vanderlei silva i don't know if you know who he is he's had a yes. legendary career and it's very much known for boxing and brawling and rampage also so you can just imagine how this ended uh second round tko rampage, rampage one yeah and uh, Vanderlei... Hey, isn't Silva, like, f pushing 50, man? Yeah. Yeah, Silva's right. not 50, I don't think, but, like, definitely in his 40s, for sure. 40s, oh, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Rampage, too. They actually both look a little heavier. This was a heavyweight, so they were definitely a lot, like, more sluggish. And uh, But also, they explained, uh, the, the experts through the announcers, they explained that even when you get older, all you really lose is your endurance, but your power is always there. Well, hence the the knockout, you know. And the last one, probably the best one of the night, Kegard Musasi, who was in the UFC. Uh, he's the middleweight champion. He fought and defeated Rory McDonald, who was uh, a, wel a welterweight in the UFC as well. They are both coming from the UFC into Bellator, and they're both champions now, which just goes to show you the quality of people in the UFC. They're able to be champions other places, even if they weren't champions in the UFC. And, uh, yeah, Gegard Musasi defended his uh, middleweight belt against Rory McDonald, who stepped up one class because he's a welterweight, like I said. He stepped up one class to middleweight. Unfortunately, man, I have Rory McDonald's back. He's, like, one of my favorite fighters. He's called mm -hmm. the Red King, and he, he's just a fucking, oh, man, he's a beast, dude. Like, he takes so much damage but still comes at you. But, unfortunately, he, he couldn't win this one. He got defeated in the second round TKO. By Gegard Musasi. So, the the one I'm kind of shocked to hear was the 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 Rampage because I remember him from UFC and and Strikeforce and, and and Silva. Now, do you feel it was just like an attraction to get people to 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 watch it, or do they still have it? It was more like an attraction. Um, I would say it's like a veterans fight because they do that right. sometimes. Uh, actually, Tito Ortiz is, uh, I think, scheduled and contracted to fight Chuck Liddell uh, upcoming. I don't know if you heard. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, I, I've heard of that. Um, yeah, that, that's about to, uh, Bellator. I barely watch UFC. The Bellator. I wa the only name they caught up. Yeah, was uh, this guy uh, Rampage and Silva. So. Yeah, yeah. Right now, um, Bellator is really just trying to sign up any kind of talent they could find. They actually just signed on uh, Leota Machida, who was a champion uh, a ways back in the UFC, but he's still a very a promising prospect um, in terms of like a, in terms of value. Like a, for for MMA, he brings a lot of people to, to like to watch him, gets a lot of eyes on him. So. Uh, it's good signage by Bellator. He still has, I think, another year or two left in him. Uh, Leo is on the tail end of his career. He's had a long career. But uh, to, to me, it, there's there's reason to still watch him fight in Bellator. It's, it's to see 
it'll be the true test. If he can do well in Bellator, which I'm hoping he does, then, um, yeah, he can probably still be a champion. He could probably make a lot of money and end his career on a high note. Whereas UFC with veterans, I don't know if you've noticed this habit, but UFC and the veterans there, they generally they don't retire very well. They usually end up like retiring off of losses or getting knocked out, and it's usually bad business. It sucks, you know. So, so that fighter you just mentioned is—is is that that karate mm-hmm. kid guy? Yeah, yeah, he's the one that does like the karate kicks in the face and knocks people out. Yeah, like, yeah, fucking, I remember him. <laughs> like Daniel, um, what's his name? Larusso. Larusso. Yep. But yeah, that was my weekend, man. Bellator. It was actually interesting. Uh, it's worth watching for sure. So, uh, Daniel, uh, what you been up to, man? What did you do this weekend? Uh, just, just pretty chill week. Uh, nothing too eventful, other than uh, we signed Junior up for some coding classes at his school, uh, as well as well as uh, he picked up a, a, a musical instrument. So he's playing currently the trombone. Uh, so, yeah, he he was doing that. Uh, last week, the trombone thing and the coding <laughs> was actually today was his first class. So he's really excited with these new after school activities. And uh, nice. hopefully it'll, you know, give him, you know, something to do after school. Keep keep his mind, you know, active and entertained uh, instead of just his face down onto a tablet. Good call. Uh, why did he pick the, the, the trombone? You know, I have no idea, man. It's not like there's these famous trombone players and he's just like, oh, my God, or he's not into, like, New Day from WWE. And he's like, I want to play a trombone, too, you know. (laughs) I have no idea, dude. Uh, I was kind of trying to push him towards the trumpet because I'm like, La Raza plays trumpets. There's a lot of uh, musicians, Mexican artists that play the trumpet and American Mm -hmm. as well. But uh, I'm like, man, if you're going to he wanted a brass instrument. So uh, he's that's why he leaned towards the trombone. But actually, after two classes of the trombone, it looks like he wants to try the trumpet because he sees all these other trumpet guys going crazy, you know, doing whatever they do. And so uh, he just recently, a couple days ago, mentioned to us that he wants to switch to the trumpet. And we're in the process of getting his instrument switched out from the trombone to the trumpet. So I guess peer pressure got to him, and, and now he, he wants to join everybody else having fun with the, the trumpet. Yeah, I find that interesting. Like, uh, uh, I would I thought for sure, you're like, oh, maybe you should do this one. Uh, but to pick the trombone, it's not want to say rare, but it's definitely not very common. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm surprised that he wanted to do a brass instrument. Most kids want to play the guitar or play drums, uh, learn the bass and stuff like that. I, I got a couple nephews that are musically inclined as well, and um, the one played bass, and then he, he switched off to uh, guitar or um, the cello. And he's just been going back and forth with a bunch of different bass instruments, so like the bass line. So... I don't know. I don't know where he got that interest, but yeah, it's it's exciting, man. Uh, I like hearing him play, even though it is sometimes uh, a little bit of a ruckus when you want some quiet time after coming home from a long day of work. But uh, you know, it's better than nothing, man. It's it's better that he gets engaged and tries different after-school activities and keeps his head out of that tablet as much as possible so that he could do other things other than electronic games and video games. Yeah, I find it interesting because I knew you for a long time. I don't remember you playing an instrument or anybody in your family, to be honest. Uh, And I don't recall ever you telling me that your wife plays an instrument. I mean, other than probably like the standard stuff, like the clarinet, uh, or or whatever other goofy instrument the triangle they, yeah whatever or another goofy yeah. not not the clarinet the recorder right from from grade school yes 
green green leaves or what right green sleeves green sleeves that's different what's that that what that's what you play with your recorder what the i don't, I don't remember that is that oh, is that a musical man. piece you played yeah everybody had to play green sleeves i have not that then you again remember, i Danny? blocked it out nope i guess danny doesn't remember <laughs> did we lose him again there he goes He's like, fuck this green sleeve sucks. <laughs> I'm out of here. Look at that shit. I don't need no oh sleeve. My God. I like so, he, I guess that triangle brought back m- uh, bad memories and he he had to leave us. <laughs> and uh, it's just been that type of show, people. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't recall, like I said, I've known you too a long, uh, you too a long time though, and I don't recall you playing an instrument either, or your brothers, or your dad, or your mom. So, I find it kind of interesting. Uh, your other brother, his kids play instrument. Uh, Danny's kids play an instrument. So I, I find that interesting where all this music stuff's coming from. Yeah, no, you're right, man. None of us have ever really had any history with like instruments. The closest would be my dad, probably, but he never really, he always wanted to play guitar, but he never played it. He more or less just uh, sang. He has a good singing voice. I think that might be where it comes from, because mm-hmm. cause I asked him, I'm like, who would you learn to sing from? Or like, well, where did you just start doing that? Like, what? why did you want to start singing? He's like, I just, I did it, you know, we'd be working, you know, hard as, at a young age, you know, like six years old, seven years old, that child labor wasn't exist. Like, laws weren't existing in Mexico <laughs> back in the day. So he's like, I'd just be singing, making the day go by. And be- before I knew it, I had fun. And people were, like, were asking me to sing songs and all that. We'd go drinking. And I'm like, damn. So I think, if anything, it probably comes from that, like, artistic mind. You know, he has that. I know Afrin draws. I like to write and sometimes draw. Daniel, Saul, they both can uh, can draw some stuff and so I think uh, Christian, my nephew, I think he just kind of picked it up from a different branch. It's still like artistic, but in a musical way. Well, yeah, you guys have always been creative from drawing. Um, you know, to us, you guys, you and Danny are brothers doing the podcast. You guys always have a creative bone. I, you know, I know you You like to write and you have some... some uh, you know, ideas that you have, uh, you put pen to paper, um, but it's just like the the the, ins- the instrument stuff. <laughs> the, the, you know, going to the instrument from that to instrument, it, it just seems like did you guys you, you you guys got jumped apparently? Cause your dad, all I know, your dad, the I just remember from him, he was a big bowler. I don't remember him doing anything else. No, you're right. Yeah, and even that, he kind of quit, like, really early on in the 90s. I remember I would go to the bowling alley with him, and that's when I had my first beer because they, they didn't have, <laughs> They weren't selling, like, soda that late, and I'm thirsty. And he's just like, here, just have a sip of my beer. I'm like, oh, shit, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that's that was back in the 90s, though. Yeah, since then, he hasn't really bowled. But, uh, yeah, the, the, I just remember seeing the trophies, uh, and uh, I just remember, wow, he has bowling trophies, so uh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's pretty much it. He actually, he did play softball. He was actually one of those guys. Who, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He was actually. I remember because we went to. Uh, it was like the forest preserve parties. You remember back in the day, you growing up as a kid, yeah. family go out to the forest preserve, have a little cookout, all that. I remember as a kid going to one of these cookouts, and he he was, uh like, everybody was playing softball. All the older people, you know, they were probably in their 30s, 40s. And I saw him, like, hit the ball pretty far, and he ran. He ran. I was like, holy shit, my dad's running? Like, oh, shit. First time I've ever I've seen him. Seen, I, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I would ever see Don Balto run anywhere. Ah, dude. Your dad's, like, cool and laid back, so to see him in a rush, exactly. yeah, that would shock the shit out of me. My mom always says he has a pachora. You know, like he goes really slow and sluggish <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. So to see him running and playing, it was kind of cool, you know. But yeah, generally, not really much of a of an instrument player. So these kids, man, good for Junior, good for all my nephews. I hope they stick with it. 
Absolutely. So, so real update, update, Dan, uh, guys. We lost Danny for sure. Um, he just texted me. He said, I can't hack it. I'll be back in next week. <laughs> oh. But in all seriousness, he, uh, he is done for the night. Uh, they, maybe they have a bad storm out there or something. Uh, he lost his internet, and it pays... Uh, He's gonna go yell at Comcraps, uh, I believe, right now, and give him a piece of a uh, piece of his mind. Yeah, man, definitely do that. If you can't even do Skype, you know, it's it's not good, man. <laughs> so, but the show must go on, and uh, this week uh, we are gonna go to our articles. Let's do it. All right. So, real quick. Uh, I've always wondered this, and this guy, uh, one of the articles is, uh, a California man scratches lotto tickets and, and wins $750,000. Now, I've always, I know, me, I, I, I'm a, I consider myself a gambler. I always wonder, fuck, there's got to be a million dollar ticket in one of those uh, things. How much do you got to spend to get the million bucks? Well, this guy, he, 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 he does it, uh... He says, I'm going to fucking spend as much money as I can you know, until I get paid. And the article goes into, this guy's in California, and he won uh, $750,000. He was buying $10 tickets, and um, how many tickets do you think he, he had a scratch though until you won? Well, I know you know. You read the article, but I could just guess. Beat, knowing these odds, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, it's, it's crazy how he managed to get it in so many like so little of tries you would think it'd take hundreds yeah. and hundreds of tries so yeah he bought ten dollars uh he scratched uh five fucking tickets at ten dollars a pop and he won it yeah and uh, the only thing this guy did wrong he won the lottery you're like damn you, you hit the jackpot he decided to propose to his girlfriend right there and there or when they went to go pick up the money, he decided, like, let me go scratch. Let me propose to my girlfriend as we go cash this lottery ticket. <laughs> I found that and, the most, uh, like, surprising of the whole thing. I think she won the lottery yeah. uh, more than him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was like, but, man, uh, do you wonder, like, what, what would happen if it was the other way around? Do you think she would have been like, yeah, let's get married? Hell no. <laughs> I, to be honest, I don't think so. <laughs> Um, and the, the funny thing is now when I was going to school, I was studying, uh, I was studying to be a police officer and a lot of the teachers were cops. And this is not the first time I've read or heard something like this back then. This is like in the early two thousands. Mm-hmm. This cop told me there used to be a, a little convenience store in, the. He said about twice a year he would get a call from the convenience store owner. The guys, uh, the overnight clerk, uh, would you know, was there by himself, bored out of his mind. He had access to all these lottery tickets, and he'd be like, "Fuck, man, there's got to be like a thousand dollar winner here, or like a five thousand dollars," and they would scratch the shit out of him. And he said it, every year, twice a year, he would get a call. The, the, the owner would come in to start the morning shift or whatever because it was a mom and pop. And he would see all these lottery tickets there. And the fucking guy spent like three grand and only won like uh, 500 bucks or something. So he would like file a complaint. He would get the guy arrested for like theft and all this goofy shit. And they would have to go to court and settle. And he said that uh, this, when you know I was going to school, he said this happens a lot. There's people out there like, well, the fucking winner's got to be here. And they, they do all this shit, like spend money or the clerks would steal the money. Wow. that Yeah, that seems pretty plausible, especially if they're probably like younger. If they're working in the gas station or something like that or mom and pop place, they're probably not making so much. They're probably hurting for money. Uh, did, did you play the, the lottery regular, Noah? I don't think you're the, the lottery or scratcher type. You know what i've i've uh, been tempted but uh i've only played maybe like three or four in my entire life really yeah. 
I buy a five dollar ticket every Friday and my morning commute when I stop to get uh on Fridays I get a donut, I get a pop, a big gulp from this uh seven eleven and I buy a five dollar scratcher. Now out of the four tickets, what is that? It's twenty bucks. I went on a bad streak where I didn't win anything for three months. And then the this last two month and a half I've won maybe eighty dollars. Okay. So I won like fifty and then I won a couple ten dollar ones and a couple where oh, I broke even five. So overall I think throughout the year I think I'm better just putting my five bucks in the fucking bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I think a lot of it too though is uh people have fun, you know, it's the suspense, you know. Right. So yeah, but my my cap is five bucks. Maybe around Christmas I'll get like a twenty dollar one and to see where my luck is at. Um and I've bought uh I, I've gone to Christmas parties and I've spent like fifty, sixty bucks on lottery tickets just to hand them out. And fuck man, I think the most someone I, I did it for like three years in a row and I think the highest anybody won out of that whole batch. It was a bunch of different lottery tickets. I think it was like ten bucks, man. It was like something ridiculous. I'm like, man, this is a fucking racket, you know? <laughs> so, you know, all you lottery people out there, keep at it. Uh, you know, you gotta you gotta scratch you, you can only win if you scratch them, I guess. But uh let's go to the second article of the week which we have is uh this one uh, this is one of the weirder ones now of all the articles we've talked we've talked some fucking doozies you know people urinating in red boxes uh not to kaepernick yeah we've talked about uh uh you know fluoride fucking vegan uh all you vegans be careful i know vegans like emailing us <laughs> so there was this guy in virginia I guess he puts a new spin to the word organic. So the article states there's this guy in Virginia. He, he goes, he's facing charges because he's grabbing uh, produce. And it pulls in this grocery store. And, and I quote the article says, pull down his pants, rub the food items on his bare buttocks. <laughs> and then... The suspect then allegedly, so he hasn't found been found guilty yet, Noel, put the tainted produce back on the shelves, according to the Associated Press. Now, the guy's name is, uh, the culprit here, uh, stand, you know, standing trial, his name is Michael Dwayne Johnson. So when I heard it's the, the Rock is fucking doing this shit, like, what the hell? But they put a picture of him, of his mugshot, and yeah, he looks kind of a, a, like uh, like he needs help. And then uh, an employee saw this and called 911. And then the employee told him, uh, you know, he's pulling down his pants and rubbing the shit, uh, rubbing, rubbing the produce on his products. Uh, they charged him with two misdemeanors, indecent exposure, and destruction of property. And then uh, the best part is we know we're hoping this is an honest store. The supermarket was... Uh, had it destroyed several pallets of produce. So this guy went on a buttocks uh, rubbing spree. And, uh, <laughs> you know, they haven't determined what th he decided to do this. Now, if you saw a guy, I worked at a grocery store and I did see some fucked up shit, but I've never seen anything like that. If you saw a guy grabbing food and putting in his pants and it, it what would you do noel would you call 911 or would you tell an employee or just be like fuck this i'm out of here i'm never coming back i for sure would tell an employee and then i would leave and then i'd probably never go back there again well you wouldn't tackle him tackle him no that's yeah why not it's not on me because you don't know like what if he's carrying a gun or he's like obviously this guy has problems right he's putting produce in his butt it doesn't make any sense why he's doing it but he has a reason in his mind why he should do this, right? Like, the way you think about it, like, he has some conscious thought, like, oh, this is what I should be doing right now with my day. So it's like, if that's the kind of thought he's having, why wouldn't he, like, try to hurt somebody who's trying to tackle him 
and keep him from doing his desire of rubbing produce on his genitals and buttocks and whatever else. I, I w- the buttocks. I wouldn't want to mess with the guy. I, I would be like, hey, this guy's doing some freaky shit. I'm out of here. Just want to let you know. And then I'd the, let them take care of it. I know that that's going to that's gonna be kind of a problem now that I don't want to deal with for damn sure. Maybe he, he, he's making a political statement, man, saying that organic food is not organic. Or <laughs> food's expensive. That's what I want to know. I'm going to try to get this guy on the show, man. <laughs> oh, my God. He's so crazy. Just be careful with your mic. He might shove it up his butt, too. I like how they they put in the article, uh, accused of allegedly rubbing produce in his bare buttocks. The words they use is, what is making me laugh. But, yeah, you got to be a little messed up. Now, when I work, now look at it this, Noel. When I worked at a grocery store, this is in the mid-90s. There was people literally smoking in the fucking produce and the vegetable and, and fruit section. Now, is smoke worse than the guy rubbing <laughs> food on his butt? Uh, I th- I'm going to say yes. And <laughs> and I, I think uh, dysentery is probably the, the biggest reason why. Uh, I don't know if the smoke would stay on there. I don't think it would. Or if it would penetrate the skin of the food. If, if that's depending on the food, I guess. But this guy pretty, probably forever tainted this fruit. I don't know what you could do to remove whatever germs was located in his ass. I don't know if there's a way to do that. Like, would you put it in, like, a vat of, like, vinegar and, like, alcohol? I, I don't even know. What you, you can't really. There's no salad saving that. You you have to. Uh, yeah, the, you, I, I think there's no salvage in that. You would have to fucking throw that out. And uh, I'm shocked. Uh, you know what? Out of this whole article, the shocking part, yes, the guy rubbing. I, I'm, I'm shocked the employees didn't do more of a DIY thing. Where like I'm gonna handle this. They called the cops. Cause going back to like, man, I'd be like, this guy's fucking up the store, man. I gotta take him down, you know. And they called 911 instead. Yeah, I think if it was like the 70s or 80s, that guy would have been like. He would have been roughed up and then thrown out the back, and you would never see him again. But um, considering that this is like the modern day, and everybody's got like a cell phone, and it's just a lot easier to call the cops and have them come. And, like, well, th- that's the thing, Noel. Not you brought up a great point there. I didn't even think about it until right now. I have not seen no fucking video of this guy rubbing the, the fucking food on his ass. <laughs> and the world we live in with cell phone, you would imagine somebody would have recorded that. Yeah, you got a point so there. The, he might be innocent, man. Well, they do say allegedly, so we'll have to see. We'll have to stay tuned and give give our <laughs> listeners an update on this one. <laughs> yeah, man, we, we, we need an update. We need to see the video. There's all these videos of all this craziness, and there's no video of a guy rubbing food on his ass. I smell, uh, you know, some uh, suspect play here. I think another guy is being set up to be taken down by the man. Because if you look at his picture, this guy does not look like your average uh, 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 law-abiding citizen here. So 27 years you get, old. You'll see it on our link. You know, check it out, and you can see the guy. I, I, allegedly, he might have some issues. I don't know. He's definitely not sane. I mean, 27 years old. He's not a kid. He's not an, like an elderly man. Sums up with this guy. Yeah, so uh, th- those would be our articles, you know. We would uh, we we had we had to lighten it up this week because uh, th- you know with uh, the serious talk we had with the last episode. So yeah, I don't know, man. If I see some guy rubbing food on his ass, I I don't know how I would handle it. Um, I don't. I think I would record it. Then I'd be like, baby, hold my phone. I'm gonna go tackle this guy. Be careful, man. You never know if they're packing. Shit, he better be careful, man. Shit. <laughs> I if he's doing it like on a, on, on a head of lettuce or some shit. Like, hey, man, I need that lettuce for these tacos we're making tonight. <laughs> yeah, but you got a good point there. Like, if he's doing it at the store you wrote, you like shop at regularly, then, then yeah, you, you kind of have to rep your store. You're like, I got these guys back, you know. 
and then maybe try to get like a discount out of it. Be like, hey, manager, I just fucking tackled this guy for you. <laughs> Hook it up with some free, you know, let you guy over here. Yeah, and, and throw in some fucking lottery tickets and, and, and give me the give me the give me some winning ones. Right. So. No, you know where they are. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I know you keep them in the back. So yeah, you know the, the, the guy winning the lottery too. Going back to him real quick, he wins it. Either he really must love his his girl, or I'm thinking if there's like an, an ulterior motive. Of him, like, man, she could try to sue me out of this money, or, like, if I marry her, then she can't get anything. I mean, it's only 750k is a lot of money, and um, so I, I don't know why he decided to marry her. That that That's why I'm going to shock. Yeah, I, you're right. There's probably more to it than we, we realize. Like, maybe she paid the money, or maybe she put, like, some money into it. Or, or something like that. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, um, it, it, it's interesting to see. I that it, that that intrigues my mind. Being how I am, how I think about this shit, I'm always thinking like, why do they do this? I'm always thinking like, I know you and Danny always talk about you know people just do uh, at the heat of the moment or like just for the fuck of it. I, I think people are a little bit more methodical and they do shit for a reason. There's always a reason people do the things they do. I guess ideally we'd like to believe that he just really loves this woman and like that's <laughs> why he really wanted to propose. He it is the heat of the moment, but in like in a positive way. Like he's he's like, Man, all my debt is settled, all my stuff is this, like everything's gonna be good from now on. Let me marry this girl and, and start our life together. Or maybe it's like you said, maybe there's something going on. He doesn't want to lose it or get sued or something. The my the Andy my evil Andy's like nah man he I think he go if he dumps this woman he's like she's gonna come after my money and she's probably gonna be pushing to get married or she if they break up she might try to go for the money you know or some goofy thing so to me I'm thinking like yeah it's uh we gotta. We, we, I, I gotta marry this woman. I like preemptive, preemptive marriage, you know. <laughs> I'm thinking, in a positive way, but there is plausibility that she either put money into it, or she gave him money to go and do this, or she had something to do with it. Where, where there's there's plausibility that if she did sue, she could probably win. And so he's like, I'm gonna just void all that shit, marry this girl, and then we're just gonna split it and live nice. Hopefully that that's where uh, I, I'm thinking the the positive Andy's trying to think that, but we're gonna end this on a positive note. We 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 missed Danny on this episode. We had a lot of technical issues, but Noel and myself are here to bring to to feed you guys, yeah, f- some food for thought on ass rubbing uh, uh, food and lottery winners. Apparently, there are lottery winners. We read about them, but I'm yet to meet one that's won hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, if you're a vegan and in Virginia, just beware. There are people running being <laughs> their butts on your food. Just beware of them. Yeah, man. I, I don't think no type of scrubbing is going to get that, uh, that scent, the ass scent out. But uh, we got to head out of here, guys. We want to thank you for listening. Remember to follow Freeform Network on Facebook and Twitter at under Freeform Network. Also, don't forget to send questions and suggestions to ffnquestions at gmail.com. Check out our uh, webpage where you can send us questions and ask Danny what the fuck happened. Or hit us up on Froling. Did I say that right, Noah? Froling, bro. Froling, man. I can't get that shit right. Ask me about if you need tips on hitting baseballs. Uh, so hit us up. And um, we want to thank you guys again for listening. And my partner today, Noel. That's you, that's you Noel. Oh, yeah, Danny. Danny. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's still arguing with uh, Comcast. Uh, I mean, Comcast. Uh, we, we could edit that out. Um, oh, there you go. So Danny just texted it and said, yeah, this is all Comcast's fault. Some maintenance crap. But he will be here with us next time. And my name is Andy. 
and uh, your MVP at any softball for a, a hire. If you guys need a bet, hit me up. And uh, we wish you all a good week, and we'll see you guys next time. That was cool, Dad.